Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. for tuning into the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and I just want to thank you for joining me. Welcome if this is the first time that you're joining me. Uh, If you're a returning listener, welcome back. I'm so happy that you're here again. So if you um, are a returning listener and you listened last week, we talked about the Ramona Clear, the Ramona Quimby books, excuse me, um, and the Junie B. Jones series. Books that have um, feisty and determined and stubborn and funny female protagonists. So this week, I wanted to flip that around and look at some books that have uh, male protagonists, um, young boys, who are also funny and feisty and stubborn in their own ways. And I don't like to necessarily... um, make this a binary distinction that these are, you know, last week's were girl books and this week's are boy books because I think that um, children of both genders um, could get enjoyment and learning out of these books. I think there's a lot to be said for reading books that are about, you know, if you're a young woman, you read a book about a, a boy and get a different perspective and vice versa. But I did want to look at some books that have those um, male protagonists. And so this week I want to look at um, a series and then two other books. And the series is The Fudge Books by um, Judy Bloom, uh, then How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell, and finally um, Max Crumbly. It's actually Max Crumbly Locker Hero, and that is by Rachel Renee Russell. So we are going to jump right in with that first series, uh, The Fudge Books by Judy Bloom. And this was a series that I read as a kid and just thought was absolutely hilarious, hysterical. Um, The books consist of Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, otherwise known as Sheila the Great, Super Fudge, Fudgemania, Double Fudge. So there's five books, and they are called the Fudge books. The last three actually have um, Fudge in the title. So Fudge is a little boy. And his name is actually Farley Drexel, um, but his parents call him Fudge. And so the first book, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, is actually about Fudge's older brother, Peter, or Pita, as Fudge calls him. And um, Peter is in fourth grade, and Fudge is a toddler, a very precocious toddler, a toddler who manages to get himself into all sorts of crazy things. And so Peter is just spending his fourth grade year uh, just eye-rolling to high heaven because he has to live with this little brother who's just so annoying. And and Fudge is hilarious, but I can also see, the, you can also see Peter's side of it. That second book, otherwise known as Sheila the Great, um, isn't about that same family, except that it kind of is. So Sheila lives in the same apartment building as Peter and Fudge in New York. Uh, they are they are city kids, and they live in New York City, and she lives in the same apartment building, and she and Peter are kind of frenemies because they are thrown together because they're in the same class, they live in the same building, etc. And so they're constantly being thrown together and, and sort of pitted against one another in, in context of the storylines. But this second book um, is from Sheila's perspective. So actually we do have another book um, with a female protagonist this week, but the majority of them uh, have Peter and Fudge as the, the main characters. But uh, this story also deals with Peter and Fudge and all, both of their families coming together. Um, actually, it's more about Sheila the Great. There's another story where both families come together. I apologize. So you get to know Sheila a little bit as this sort of um, secondary character in the other books, but then she we get to find out more about her and more about her motivations and what makes her tick. 
And then Super Fudge. Super Fudge was the book that I read first as a kid. And I don't know if I got it as a gift or if I bought it at a book fair. I don't remember where I got it first. But I do know that I read, read it first. And I, like I said at the beginning, laughed hysterically. I used to spend so much time. I don't know how many times I read this book after I got it. But I thought it was hilarious. And I quoted lines to my family. I apologized to my family because I'm sure they were so sick of hearing me talk about Fudge and how funny he was and how um, he annoyed his brother Pita. And I, I used to run around, you know, and saying that Pita, Pita, um, because Fudge has this little lisp. I thought they were hilarious. And Fudge, you know, we see him grow up a little bit throughout the books. He, As he gets older, he doesn't get any less precocious. He doesn't get any less opinionated. Um, and Peter doesn't get any less exasperated. Eventually, um, in Super Fudge, there's a little sister who's born. And her name is Tootsie. I can't remember what her actual name is. But Peter, Peter is so annoyed with his parents because first they had Fudge and now they have Tootsie. And why are they naming these children, these nicknames, these horrible nicknames that are just so ridiculous? Um, I, I love, as an adult now, I really love Peter. I think I might like him even more than I loved Fudge as a kid just because he reminds me so much of uh, some of the fourth graders that I know who look at life in that very black and white way as they are transitioning from little kid to older kid, you know, getting ready to be in the tweens and then the teens. And so they're seeing life in a different way. And Peter is like that. Now, the last two books, Fudgemania and Double Fudge, I didn't know about. I didn't read those as a kid. I went looking for these books for the Fudge books when my one of my nieces was in fourth grade because uh, my sister and I were talking about books that she could read. And I thought, oh, man, I love those fudge books. And I remember, you know, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. So fourth grade, she'd be about that same age. She has a younger sister, not as much younger as fudge is to Peter, but still she has a younger sister. I thought she might appreciate these books. And so I went looking for them and discovered that there was actually five. There were these two that I'd never read, Fudge Mania and Double Fudge. And so I was just thrilled. So I got her a set and I checked all of them out for the library from the library for me and reread the first three that I'd already read and loved them again and then read these other two that I hadn't read before. So the other two, the last two were written a little later, I think in the 90s. I didn't double check that and I apologize. The first ones were written um, earlier. So They've been updated. When I read them as a kid, they were, you know, there were no computers, laptop computers. There were no iPods. There were no cell phones, those sorts of things. Some of that has been updated as you read. Um, and that was one of the things that I was like, wait a minute, when I read through them the second time as an adult, I don't remember this technology being in the original books. And so you can get the versions that have been updated, or you can read the versions that the original versions. And there's not that much technology in there that I think it would cause any issues, any confusion. Uh, I think it's kind of fun to read stories that are set in a different time, you know, when we didn't have all of the, the things that we have now, all of those screens that are constantly present. So the fudge books. I loved them. I love all the characters. I love the parents who are living with these two very, very strong-willed boys in different, you know, they're strong-willed in different ways. I love the that they still made me laugh as an adult. I love that there are some great moments that could be um, talked about as a family because the family that Peter and Fudge are a part of and Tootsie eventually, you know, they grow and they change. Obviously, they grow and change when they bring a new baby into the house they grow and they change. They have one year where they spend outside the city. They go and live somewhere else. So they experience a different kind of life. They uh, sublet a house of a family who is in, I think, Europe for a school year. And so you get these experiences. Uh, I think that was part of the appeal as a kid, too, was that, you know, I didn't grow up in New York. So thinking about living in an apartment building and having to take an elevator every day was really fascinating for me. But I also just fell in love with the characters. Fudge, like I said, is a crack up. Peter is this perfect combination of 
kind and caring and cynical. And he, like I said, reminds me of a lot of the kids of that age that I know. And that's why I chose them for my uh, my one niece who was in fourth grade at the time. So I know this doesn't give you a lot of um, plot for the stories, but I really think I would say definitely, definitely check these books out if you have um, children there of that age around, you know, younger. I don't think I was in fourth grade when I read them. I think I was younger when I first read them. Um, and so they do relate to they they will be relatable for kids of different ages because again fudge is younger peter's a little bit older and peter has this relationship with his best friend he's got this relationship with his um friend not friend sheila and then there's fudge just uh causing may mayhem and chaos throughout the whole stories and through all of the stories and being adorable and obnoxious and hilarious all at once all of those things that make you laugh as in a book and think Oh my, I know that kid and uh, I w- or I was that kid or I hope I don't have that kid. Um I definitely recommend them. Check them out, you know, go online and see if they are something that you're interested in, read the synopses, uh, those sorts of things, but for me, two definite major thumbs up even though they are books from my childhood, they still hold up. They're still great. Uh, check them out the fudge books by judy bloom and with that we are going to take uh, our first break and when we come back we'll be talking about how to eat fried worms by thomas rockwell stay tuned always on the go but the day just won't be one without your hollywood fix let golden state media concepts entertainment podcast take care of that jordan and keith is entertainment tonight meets access hollywood i'm jordan the guy laughing that's keith <laughs> yeah i'm keith an all-inclusive look of pop culture Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Before the break, I was talking about the Fudge series by Judy Bloom, a book or a series of books that I read as a child and um, just thought were hilarious. And I was thinking about one part that I didn't bring up. Um, I didn't bring up a lot of the the funny stories that you can read in these books, but in the first book, in um, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, Fudge actually eats Peter's turtle. Peter wins a tiny little turtle at a birthday party and brings it home. And um, I can't remember why, but Fudge swallows it and he ends up having to go to the hospital. He's fine, but the the turtle is not. You know, the turtle got eaten. Um, and it's just it's just one of those things where you're like, oh, my gosh, this kid ate his brother's turtle. Uh, I won't tell you what happens after that, but um, it does work out OK in a certain sense. Not for the turtle, though. So I... I bring that up because eating turtles is disgusting, uh, as is this the, the theory behind this next book, How to Eat Fried Worms, which is a book that came out in 1973. So it's a classic. It's an oldie but a goodie, um, actually published before I was born, but not that much before. I remember reading this book as a kid and being really, really grossed out by eating the worms. Uh, we used to sing that song as a kid. Um, Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. Think I'll go eat worms. Guess I'll go eat worms. Big, fat, juicy ones, long, skinny, slimy ones. First you bite the head off, then you bite the tail off, then you suck the juice out, then you throw the rest away. Yeah, gross. So probably that song influenced me to want to read this book, or maybe my librarian father suggested it, or my mother bought it for me. You never know. How to Eat Fried Worms. Uh, There was a movie of the same name in 2006. I don't remember if I... I don't think I saw it. I remember seeing the previews for it. But obviously, uh, 1973, 2006, a children's book, um, an hour and a half to two-hour movie. Excuse me. There's going to be some differences. Um, So we're going to just be focusing on the book today. And here is the synopsis. People are always daring Billy to do zany things. But Billy may have bitten off more than he can chew when he takes his friend Alan's bet that Billy can't eat 15 worms in 15 days. If Billy wins, Alan has to fork over $50. Billy wants the money to buy a used minibike, so he's ready to dig in. 
He sets up mustard and ketchup, salt and pepper, and sugar and lemon to disguise the disgusting taste. Good news for Billy. Once he gets going, he finds himself actually getting hooked on those juicy worms. Bad news for Billy. Alan is busy cooking up schemes to make Billy worm out of the bed. Will Billy keep up his wormy work for 15 days? No cheating. Keep eating worm by worm by worm. So Billy, you know, they're always daring him to do zany things. And his friend Alan dares him that he can't eat 15 worms in 15 days. And Billy takes that bet. Because if he wins, he'll he'll win fifty dollars, right? Fifty dollars for a kid even now is a is a good is a good size bet. Nineteen seventy three, that was some pretty good change for a kid, you know, buying a used mini bike and everything. So fifteen worms in fifteen days. The only thing is, the the agreement is that he can do anything that he wants to in order to disguise the taste, but he has to eat them. There have to be witnesses. So Billy and Alan both have friends that come along. So there's four boys involved in this whole thing. Billy eats the first one, gags it down, you know, covers it in a bunch of stuff. And then he starts coming up with all of these ways to eat them. Well, maybe I'll fry it like a fish. Maybe I'll do this with it. Maybe I'll put it in this kind of food. And he discovers that it's not that bad. So then Alan kind of starts to freak out a little bit because Billy is going at it like gangbusters. So he starts to try to sabotage the bet because he doesn't want to pay $50. And he starts to think about what his parents, what his dad's going to say when he finds out that he bet Billy $50 to eat worms. So you can see where this, you know, is going to get very silly very fast. So there's the bet. There's the eating of the worms. There is the trying to sabotage the eating of the worms. And then there's also the dynamics of these young boys' friendships. So they are um, about about the same age as Peter in, in the Fudge books, you know, maybe fourth grade, fifth grade around there, um, old enough to know better a little bit, but also this that right age to you know dare each other to do disgusting things and and try to get each other you know try to get each other to top those disgusting things so i read this book when i was a a kid like i said and just remember being completely grossed out i decided after i read the fudge books that um I wanted to reread this one as well. I was thinking about uh, other books that I'd read and enjoyed as a kid and wanted to revisit. And this one came to mind. And I, I was pleasantly surprised that it was, um, not surprised. I was, I was just pleased that it was both as disgusting as I remember, but also not as disgusting as I remember, if that makes any sense. I remembered um the 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 overarching story i remembered a lot of that but i didn't remember a lot of the smaller details so i didn't remember that billy started kind of like eating the worms that he found it a fairly easy thing to do i i remembered all the outrageous ways that he tried to cover up the taste of the worms but then i'd forgotten all of the other little things that happened with the trying to sabotage it and the things that the friends do and you know not telling their parents and trying to figure out ways to 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 make these worms into recipes etc it is hilarious and enjoyable and gross and would definitely appeal to young boys and girls who like that certain kind of factor in their books, but not like gross or creepy or gory or graphic. There are those books as well. And, and, you know, lots of people like the scarier kind of this is just good old plain fun kind of book. And, um, I'm really glad I'm not transcribing this podcast because I have no idea how to spell it. And I've now said it like 15 times in a row. How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell is a really, really fun book. And I highly recommend it for your kids. Uh, The Amazon says grade levels three through seven, age level eight through 12. So that gives you an idea of the ages that your kiddos might be to enjoy this book. Definitely uh, a fun book that they can read on their own or you can read as a family. A good way to get into those conversations about Hey, why why don't we do everything that our friends suggest that we do? Or um how would you have reacted to this situation? You know, great for family discussions. Um or maybe you could come up with your own recipes for fried worms. If you do, uh, I don't really want to hear about it, especially if you eat them. 
So How to Eat Fried Worms, another book that I highly recommend, another book with uh, strong, silly, stubborn boys at its very center. Check it out. It's by Thomas Rockwell. We're going to take our second break, and when we come back, we will be discussing uh, the book Max Crumley, Locker Hero. Stay tuned, and we will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Before the break, I was talking about the book How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell. And before that, in the first segment, I was talking about the Fudge series by Judy Bloom. So today's books are um, books that have boys at the center, feisty, uh, stubborn, silly, maybe sometimes kind of gross boys, um, but really fun to read. This next book, uh, The Misadventures of Max Crumbly, one locker hero so it's the first of a series which i'm excited about is by rachel renee russell you may know her she wrote the dork diaries so that is uh if you've read that series she is the author of that and now she has this new character max crumbly it's a brand new series and it says max crumbly is about to face the scariest place he's ever been south ridge middle school there's a lot that's great about his new school but there's also one big problem. Doug, the school bully, whose hobby is stuffing Max in his locker. If only Max could be like the hero in his favorite comics. Unfortunately, Max's uncanny, almost superhuman ability to smell pizza from a block away won't exactly save any lives or foil bad guys. But that doesn't mean Max won't do his best to be the hero his school needs. So, this, you get you get the conflict right away, right? So he moves to a new school. It's middle school. So uh, that's that's a great time for some kids and a really horrible time. I mean, some people have really terrible memories of middle school. But it's one of those, it's that transitional time, right? When uh, they're not quite teens, they're not quite kids. They're trying to find their way, figure things out. And on top of that, Max has a new school that he's going to. And that new school has a bully. And that's Doug. Doug, who likes to stuff Max into his locker. Uh, as a quick side note, um, I had a friend when I would think I was in, I must have been in third grade because we had lockers in third grade, but not any other grade in elementary school. Um, long story, doesn't matter. And one night, I don't even remember why we were at the school after hours, but my dad was a teacher, so that happened a lot. She decided that... Um, I should get in my locker and she would close it and then I would tell her my combination from inside the locker. Why I agreed to this, why I thought it was a good idea, I don't know. I wasn't bullied. I wasn't shoved in there. I was talked into it by my friend Willa who said, hey, this sounds like a great idea. And dumb nine-year-old me said, sure, let's try it. She couldn't get the locker open. She had to find a janitor, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I've been stuck in a locker for about, it was probably five or 10 minutes, seemed longer. So I sympathize a little bit with Max, uh, although his is a repeating incident. So uh, Doug keeps doing this to him. And it's a new school. So, you know, it's a new school. Max is trying to fit in. He's trying to find his place. So he's not reporting this to anyone. He's just kind of letting it happen, trying to avoid Doug, etc., trying to find where he fits in, in this school's hierarchy and the groups of social cliques and all of those fun things that happen at this age. 
But unfortunately, when this book takes off, Max is stuffed into his locker on Friday afternoon, and he is there, and he thinks he's going to be stuck there over the weekend. This is not a good thing. I was in that locker for what felt like forever, but was only a few minutes, 10 at most, and that was enough. I can't imagine being stuffed in a locker and thinking that I was going to be there all weekend. He tries to gain the attention of someone. He tries to gain the attention of the janitor, but the janitor is wearing headphones, earbuds, so he can't hear Max in the locker. Eventually, Max figures out a really clever way to get out of the locker, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it leads to some other adventures that he has in the school, some encounters that he has in this uh, supposedly empty school that is not as empty as one might think. And he ends up encountering the girl that he likes. So there's some interaction there. There's some um, some developing of a friendship, a possible friendship, maybe maybe a little romantic interest. Uh, you know, we're not sure. And it doesn't fully wrap things up. This is a series. And so I'm really excited to find out what's going to happen next what's going to happen next in max's adventures as he is the locker hero so i like this book it's a it's a little older than the first couple of books that i talked about you know it does have a protagonist who is in middle school i'm looking on amazon and they're saying grade level 4 through 8 and 9 through 13 so just a little bit older than um what we were talking about before with the fudge series and how to eat fried worms but still um, a great, you know, if you, at the older ages, you may not still be reading with your kids, but if you read as a family, this would be a great one to read because it's funny, it's engaging, but it's also great, I think, for uh, boys and girls to read, you know, because it does deal with some of those issues that happen in these grades. You know, it's recommended for four through eight, the the issues of bullying, the issues of fitting in, the issues of being the new kid, and also uh, really good things about figuring out different ways of approaching a problem, um, learning to maybe ask for help from someone that you didn't think could be helpful, learning how to, um, well, get out of your locker. I, I really hope that your kids uh, don't get stuffed in a locker and have to figure that out. But looking at problems from different ways, I think this is a great book that addresses that. Um, so, Rachel Renee Russell wrote The Misadventures of Max Crumbly, Locker Hero. I think it's a great, fun read. I highly recommend it. I'm really excited for the next ones. I don't see when the next one might be coming out. And maybe I'm just not looking at the sa- at the right place. If you know that, then um, I would love to hear. You can catch me on social media. Uh, it also makes me want to read... Oh, hey, look at this. The Misadventures of Max Crumbly 2, Middle School Mayhem. How did I not see that? I was looking right at it. And it is out. So I have led you astray saying that the second one is not out. I apologize for giving you bad information. The Misadventures of Max Crumbly 2, Middle School Mayhem. I will be checking it out. I hope you will check it out. And um, that is all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for joining me as we discussed these books. We discussed The Fudge Series by Judy Bloom, How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell, and The Misadventures of Max Crumbly, Locker Hero. That's the book, the first one in the series, and that is by Rachel Renee Russell. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you'll join me again next time as we talk about more books, uh, do more book reviews, have another book discussion. As a reminder, you can find all of the Golden State Media Concepts podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download all of our podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud. You can also find us on Facebook uh, or on social media, Facebook being one of those. You can find us and follow us on social media. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'd love to hear your favorite books. Uh, I'd love to hear if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I'd love to hear suggestions for books that you'd like me to talk about. So you can find me and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, all those uh, good social media sites. Again, thank you for joining me. Join me again next time for more book discussions. But in the meantime, go out and get yourself lost in a good book. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. 
part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.